Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. And today we have a very, very special guest. Um, I don't need to introduce him. Gail Cliche, 2012 Premier League winner, invincible. He's doing his thing. He's been over to Turkey. He's won the league there. He's scoring goals from the halfway line, uh, even at his age. Gail, welcome uh, to my channel and thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me, mate. Hopefully, we're going to have a good time. Uh, and I'm ready. I'm ready for, you know, talking points, big points, players, and, uh, and obviously the season that we have uh, just been through. So, let's crack on. Things yeah, were starting to, to have you on. I know happened at Manchester it City? Was it an easy decision or was you torn? Um, with all my guests, I like to go back to the beginning. I like to go back to the time where you was at Arsenal. You you, you was an invincible. You was a, a playing regular in the Premier League. Manchester City just won the FA Cup and, 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 and you must have got the phone call to say that Manchester City was interested in you. I mean, it must have been a tough decision to, to think about leaving Arsenal at the time. And what was your thoughts of Manchester City as a club? Like from the outside looking in, Mancini was there. They just won the FA Cup. Did you think... Yeah, no, it, it was hard. You know, it was my f uh, eighth season with Arsenal. And obviously, if I'm not lying at that time, I uh, was ready to finish and, and do my whole career at Arsenal, you know. Uh, came as a young young man, became a man. Uh, obviously, you know, I was lucky enough to be part of the Invincible. So the club is, you know, the club, one of the biggest in England. And obviously, you know, there's a few different uh, facts. Um, City first, you know, showing interest even if I didn't know much more about what could uh, uh, and what was on the way, uh, I knew that Arsenal was looking for something new also. You know, it was that time where I think they were pushing, you know, five, six players from, from, from England. Uh, and that's me being honest. You know, uh, Kieran Gibbs was one of the, the young players. And you just feel at one point that uh, it's not that they didn't want me anymore, but they didn't want me at all costs. So obviously, I'm not talking about crazy money, but I was just waiting for, for them to show me uh, that they were ready to have me on board. And I could just feel that maybe it was the end of a circle, you know. Um, I was part of a team that uh, won, even if I wasn't a main player, but I, I, I taste the, the, the victories, you know, with the Invincible. And I was also part of that team of young talent, uh, the Emirates era, if you, if, if you know what I mean, which didn't win anything. And, uh, and in a way, there's many things uh, with that, you know, uh, financial, the, the mortgage of the stadium. Uh, but I was part of a team that was not successful. So uh, the club not wanted me to kind of uh, go over the line and, and keep me at all costs. Me feeling that, you know, maybe it was time to move on. And obviously uh, City coming up, um, talking with different players that, you know, uh, were, were there with me, Colo, Adebayor, Patrick was there also. Uh, you listen to the project. And uh, and you just realize quickly that it's a different it's a different game, you know. Um, and we're talking about big players, you know. When you have someone like Patrick Vieira who's telling you the club is going forwards, it's not you know not lacking respect to to Manu Adebayo at the time. Patrick been in the game for so long, so having him telling you the club is going places, you know, and then uh, and then obviously talking with the people, you know, uh, the board and, and and Mancini was a big factor as well for me to come. He was the first manager uh, who really wanted me, if you know what I mean. He's a manager who said, OK, we can buy any player we want. But we decided, I decided to go for you. So, you know, it was a new experience. You never know where you're going. You don't know what you're going to find. But um, after maybe a week of training uh, before going to Los Angeles in preseason, so we spent five days, six days in, um, in, uh, in the training ground. And I said to my wife, that's going to be something special. I don't know what it what, what is going to be because you, you can't predict the future. But I said, I feel at ease. I feel like I've been around for, for so long. Thanks to people like, you know, Sean Ray Phillips, uh, Nigel helped me a lot. Uh, Vincent, obviously, uh, uh, Mika, you know, they were all there. Joe Lescott, they were all there for me. And um, and yeah, after five, six days, I felt, I felt at home. And the rest, you know, it's, it's, it's a normal saying, but the rest is history, you know. No, it's mad how you mentioned that Mancini. I mean, did they 
did they have to sell you the project? Did the Caldoun get involved, or was it just a case of speaking to Mancini, feeling wanted as a player, and thinking, yeah, it feels right? And obviously, you've mentioned Patrick Vieira. I don't think Patrick Vieira would ever bullshit anyone in his life. I think he's one of them players where if he says it's going to happen, then you know in your head it's going to happen. And um, like I say, when the signing came as a bit of a surprise to us, obviously, I thought it was relatively cheap at the time. I think a lot of City fans did. I think a lot of City fans were expecting these these City to go out and just spend ridiculous money. Like we, we, we had to go through a bit of a stage where we grabbed a certain type of player. But with yourself being a steady Left back being quality, you'd won the league with Arsenal and that. I think a lot of City fans was like, okay, okay, we seem to be building something here. But talk to me about Mancini because Mancini's a legend in Manchester with City, and he sort of. I've spoke to ex-players, and some of them liked him. I think if you played for him and, and he fancied you, they liked him. If he didn't like you, I think he, he could have come across maybe a bit cold. But you can't deny that what he did in Manchester was was fantastic. I mean. You know, it's very easy. A football player, the majority of the football player, if they are playing, they will kind of like the coach or be okay with the coach. If you don't play, then obviously the perception of the relationship is different. And for me, that was always a point where a point to, to stay focused on. You know, I was saying to my wife when I was at Arsenal, I love Wenger and I told her, if one day you hear me saying bad thing about him because I'm not playing or whatever, please bring me back because... Yeah. It's not because a man decides that you're not good enough uh, that you should just say that this guy is a bad person. I think the big problem with, with Roberto is the communication. You know, his English was good, but probably not good enough for, you know, when you get hot in a moment and there is argument and you cannot find your words, uh, you will say things that probably in your native language, you wouldn't be using those kind of words. And I think that's what happened, really, if I'm, if I'm being honest. Obviously, everybody got his own relationship with, with the man. But um, put it this way, City at the time, and even now, can go and buy any player they want, like literally. So my, thing, my thinking behind that is that if they go for you, it's because they want you. And yeah. from that moment on, it's you and your personality, how you behave in the group, how, how bad you want to, 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 to immerse yourself within the club, how much do you want to speak English, how much do you want to get part of everything that's happening within the club, you know? Um, so I'm not, I'm not, you know, shooting bullets at anyone, but I just think that, you know, when you come from outside, obviously you need to, you need to make an effort to belong, you know? And when I tell you that after five, six days, I fell at home, Obviously, people helped me to make me feel good. But also, I came with my full luggage saying, I'm here. I'm here yeah. and I want to be part of that. So I think the biggest, the biggest concern with, with Roberto is that the language barrier was probably not allowing him to kind of be seen as who he is. Because he's a family man. He will help out anytime he can help out. And that's the quality and the value that you know, we should aim all aim to have in our life. So um, performance and results in the end dictate also the dynamic of a club. But yeah, I like Roberto and he was a, a massive, massive uh, uh, fact for me to join City because I spoke with him and I felt that we had something going on and, uh, and it was fine from the beginning to, to, to the end, yes. So that first season under Mancini, um, they just won the FA Cup. Was it, was it relatively, you know, early on in that season, you realised that this group of players was a special group and that, that the Premier League title was a realistic aim. I mean, we were told we were going for the title, but as City fans back then, we had a different mentality. We we had this, you've probably heard it a long time, we had this thing called typical City where City would always get you to the edge of something and then it would always crumble and then we'd all go back to the pub and we'd say, well, it was typical City, wasn't it? You know, they let us down again. Was the early on in that season where you thought, do you know what? Because you, you've experienced it with Arsenal, you 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 know in a dressing room when a team has got it. You know when you've got the momentum, you've got the rhythm, you're playing uh, regular. You know that something's happening. Did you feel like at City early doors and think this season we, we, I think we can go for it? I'm I'm going to be really honest with you. I was lucky to I, I leave the the title with Arsenal, the invincible, but I don't count myself as a, obviously a, a, a big player at that time. But I was lucky enough to be 
distant from it. So I could see how people were behaving and, and just to, to kind of link both group, that generation of player, everybody knew that Henry was going to be the main man. You know, yeah. uh, everybody knew that Patrick was the captain. And even if he didn't perform for four or five games, he would still be on the pitch because we know what he brings to the team. Everybody knew that Gilberto wasn't going to be the front page player every game. But we knew also that if he wasn't playing, the team was underperforming. So what I'm trying to say is that every player from starter to bench player to just group player, we all knew we had value within the team. And that's the most important thing. Then we went on to the Emirates era where we had plenty of talent. And perhaps, I'm not naming any players, but perhaps just for people to understand, let's say you lose a game for free. If a player had scored a hat trick, this player will actually go home thinking, I'm good, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not struggling, I've done my thing. When in those teams, the Invincible and that team of the first title winning team at City, we just wanted to win. So I know it's very subtle to understand, but I'm trying to make it for, for the not average fan, but for the proper fan who just want the team to win. And sometimes you don't really understand why a team is performing and why a striker is hitting the post and he goes in. But for some time, the, the ball hit the post and goes out. It's all yeah. this energy that you try to create. Um, some people will say that this energy is created by results. Good results will bring good energy. Some people will say that good energy will bring good results. So whatever, you, that's another subject. But the link between those two teams for me is that, is that every player were connected to the cause, uh, to the point that at City, you could have an amazing game. And three days later, somebody will play instead of you, you know? And, and yeah. everybody was happy with that. So I knew from the moment I signed for City, Listen, when you have two international players on each position, basically yeah. you have a A team and B team, and the B team will even compete with the, the A team for the title. When you arrive there, you realize, I realize that, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a talented player, but I'm someone who gives his all to the team, for the team, for the cause. And I felt when I went to City, when I joined City, I felt that mentally, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of maybe 5 10%, 15%. I was there, you know, because you have to be on it every single day. And I think everybody felt like that. And this is what makes you a special team. So really quickly, really early enough, when I signed, when I joined, I knew something special was going to happen. Maybe not that year, but I knew I was, I was on to win silverware with City. I knew it from the very beginning. Then after, obviously, you win it in the first year and then you go to the final and then you win another one. That's, that's quality and, and, and the way the club has been traveling so far. Uh, but yeah, I knew, I knew the team was going to, to perform 100%. Earlier on in that season, um, Old Trafford, Manchester Derby, both teams undefeated. The night before, we're in the pub and we hear that Mario Balotelli has set his house on fire. And um, we get up in the morning, the day of the game, we, we read the paper, fireworks in his bathroom, all this. And we was like, well, we don't mind Mario with the fireworks. He's got to turn up today at Old Trafford. And um, all we can say is he did turn up that day. You lot did turn up that day. And for, for us as City fans, that was a statement as if to say, you can call this club what you want, but Manchester City have arrived. We've came to your own backyard you know, you're undefeated, Alex Ferguson, we're undefeated and we tore you apart. And like I say, off air, I lost my job that week because I never turned up for work. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I'm teetotal for four years. But back then I used to have a beer and, and I don't know where I ended up. I was in a party in the middle of Manchester with loads of City fans doing the Poznan at 4am. We just beat Man United 6-1. I thought it was a dream. But for you playing in it and being involved in that game, surely that was a a point where you thought, we've got some team here, some team. You know, the, the story with, uh, with Mario and what happened. In, in some club, the guy would have, would have not even been on the pitch, you know. Um, and this is, this is a big thing, you know. When, when I joined City, so I'm, you have to put it in, in, in your mind, yeah. So I'm coming from Arsenal eight years. Every preseason, you know, with Wenger, it's very um, strict. So 
you cannot go out. Uh, when, I, when I'm saying go out, you cannot have day, day off. You cannot go for shopping. We were in Austria. I arrive at City and I hear that we are going on tour in Los Angeles. So already for me, it's like, whoa. Then I arrive there, we train, and then we are free to go and experience shopping and discover Los Angeles. And for me, I'm like, what's going on? You know, it's a professional club and we, I'm used to work for, for eight years a certain way. So I arrive here and we have freedom. We can, we can go out, we can have restaurant. And I'm thinking, this is two things. Either we're going to create something amazing or it's going to be a little bit, you know, you know, the, the, the board is going is, is gonna to be moving a little bit. Then you arrive to that game with that story and then boom, you know, it's like, I've never won at Old Trafford. And it's not only that I've won, we just had that game and everybody on the day performed to his best. And when you see this, eight years in England, you never won at Old Trafford with Arsenal you know something special is happening, you know? So yeah. obviously you can't tell on the day we are going to win the title, but you know that something is, you know, turning, you know? So yeah. they, they like to call the nosy neighbor. My friend, we are not there anymore, you know? We, we are coming yeah. for you and we just actually destroy you on your own, in your own ground. So like I said, from the very first moment, I knew something special was cooking, you know? I knew it, you know, special character within the team, Obviously, we all know the big names that everyone, everybody wants to hear. But, you know, you had the people like, you know, Joe Leon that, you know, we don't speak a lot about, but he was so important. Um, Kolarov was like so important. Joe Hart is, you know, well, you know, you know him more than me. So every single player had a special uh, 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 character, you know. And that's the reason we went there without any fear and we just played probably the best football that we played that year no it was it was an amazing game and like you say it it it, it really it's the start of the journey where i thought you know what wow i never thought my dreams would go there and do that but just to, just to, just to explain to me about mario i mean mario i was in istanbul last week and mario turned up in the bar where we was and um, they were treating him like a god. The city fans were shouting his name. He came to the bar, out to the bar, and he said, calm down, guys, calm down. He said, I'm going to get everybody a beer. And he bought 200 bottles of FA's beer, and the, 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 the restaurant passed them to all the city fans. And everybody calmed down, and we sang his name. And, 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 and he's a legend at Manchester City because he was a bit of a troubled soul. And I feel like Man City fans got him. We loved him. We understood him. We wanted him. We always wanted to protect him. Um but some of the stories that come out of the changing room, I think people just... He, was he just like a, an annoying little brother that just was there? Or was he, you know, was he a bit misunderstood? And You know, did you guys have to tolerate him? I, I remember him having a, a bit of a bust up with Mika Richards in training. I remember Mancini having a few fights with him and stuff. And was it just, you know, was he just a bit mad or was it just his nature? I don't, I don't know. You, you was with him all the time. Did, how did you find Mario? I think you know you hear now more than 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 ever that uh, you know uh, to become a father you need to heal you know you need to heal your past and I think we all come with a story and your story define you you know so mm -hmm. he has his own story and you have to accept that you know and and that's why the team was successful because we were able even if it was annoying sometimes for some players but everybody accepted him the way he was. What's the point in having someone and trying to change him? Obviously, you work in a group environment and you, that, there are rules that you need to, 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 to accept and you have to feel that you're making an effort to belong there. But you also have as a group, to, you have to be able to accept people to express themselves. So, of course, the way he was expressing himself is not the way I, I'm expressing myself, you know, but that's, that's obvious. The way, the way you acting is not the way I'm acting. So I think the force of this group was that, you know, we accepted him. And, you know, I'm not surprised with the fact that you guys loved him because in the end, the years of Mario and Man City are the years where everything started, you know, yeah. silverware and trophies. It would have been different if instead of winning the FA Cup and the league and the final the next year that we lost and the league again, if it was a year of maybe three, four years without anything, maybe you guys would have been much more critical with him because in the end, yeah. football is about that. Football, you know, we can tell whatever we want. A player is playing so bad for 90 minutes if he scored a winning goal. 
people are going to remember this without thinking about the, the, the 89th minute where the player was useless. And that, that's football. So in the end, his image was more like than his performances, perhaps, you know, because when you, when you look at this season, he's probably the best player in terms of quality that I played with. He is literally playing alone up front. He can be a force nine. He can be playing on the left, on the right. If you look at the quality of the player, his career is not phenomenal for, 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 for yeah. what he had, you know? And this is, this is a little bit sad, but in the end, his name is remembered for all of this and the talent he has. You, you understand? So Mario yeah. was probably important in a way that sometime, you know, that incident before the game and then him coming and delivering is like a whole story that you just bring out and it's why you're always me. You understand why I'm trying to come from? Yeah. But that's, that's an amazing character and one-on-one um, and, -on -one and with a group is, is an amazing, an amazing guy. So, uh, yeah, the story will always come because we are all different, but what a man, what a man. <clears throat> yeah, the fans love him. I mean, like I say, in, in Istanbul last week, he knew what he was doing. He knew he was coming down that street because there was 6,000 City fans there and he knew what was going to happen. And um, no, nah, it was a good, it was a nice moment. I, I, it was a nice moment to like feel like one of the players that started the journey, like yourself, was with us in the street, not not uh, behind a barrier, not not waving to us from the stand. He was in the street, in, in, in the restaurant with no security, just basically living his best life. And I thought, <laughs> I respected it, man. And Mario, you know, I always I always look out for Mario and I think Man City will always have a soft spot for him. But, um, yeah, it's good that little insight into Mario. Another player um, I wanted to talk to you about. Um, no, in fact, I'm going to leave that for a bit later on. What I'm going to move on to is also in that season, big rivals of yours from Arsenal days, Tottenham. We go to White Hart Lane. We beat him 5-1, Yeah. You being, you know, well in at Arsenal, that must have been a good feeling as well. So you've you've gone to Man City's rivals, you've done them 6-1. You've gone to Arsenal's rivals, you've done them 5-1. I think Sami Najri made his debut. I think that day was sensational. Edin Dzeko got the four. Um, what was that? that? That that for me was the time where I came out, I came, I, I was walking to White Hart Lane, a Tottenham fan said to me, Do you think you're gonna win the league this year? And I said, Well, I don't know what that feels like. But I tell you what, we never do well at Tottenham. If we win today, I'll tell you after the game. After the game, I came out and I bumped into the same guy. And he said, what can I say? And I said, all I'm going to tell you is we're going to win the league. And he went, seriously? And I went, yeah. I was that high. I, I couldn't believe what I was watching. And I mean, that must be another marker in the season where you thought, you know, to go to Tottenham and win 5-1, it ain't, it ain't easy. We can't even score at Tottenham now. So what you guys did then was great. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, like you said, obviously, you know, coming from Arsenal, there were always this, uh, this little talk with, uh, with Tottenham. But I remember during the game, I think it was probably this, yeah, last 20 minutes, I'm, I'm making a throw-in. I'm about to make a throw-in and I can, I can hear the fan talking to me, the, the Spurs fan, and they're telling me, oh, cliche, I bet you're happy today, yeah? It's a, it's, it's a new beginning for you, huh? You, you're playing nice team and you, you're scoring goals. Finally, you play for a proper team. And, you know, I was like, you know, so you make the throw-in and, and then you hear this. And it's, it's funny. So you have just like, you have a little, you know, banter with, with the fans. And from that moment, I was like, you know, you, it's, 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 it's fast. It's like in 10 seconds, you think. And you said, not only we're winning, but it's the same, same process with United. You're winning, but you're actually playing like... An amazing football. Obviously, today is different. You know, Pep is bringing something new and it's even like, it's over. But what we were doing at the time, we were just feeling so comfortable going away from home, at home. We, we, we were not scared of anyone. So when you go at Tottenham, first you go to United, you go to Tottenham. This is, this is a hard stadium to go to. And you just play, play them off the park, like playing against young kids. Yeah, something, something is happening. Something is happening. And, and the more you play, the more you build this confident and the more you build that confidence the stronger you become you know and you become a player that is actually playing 10 15 percent above his capacity and i think that yeah. that was the thing with this season you know this season every people excel and the whole team was just like you know amazing so um 
so yeah, going to those places, I think there's there are a few moments in, in the season where you feel that game was the decider, you know, like that that game was actually putting us above the other teams. And there were so many moments of that, you know, this 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 year. So um, yeah, it was an incredible season, really. Edin Dzeko that day, four goals. I mean, Edin was a great player for us. I always had this feeling about Edin that he... Some players in the City team would accept their role. I feel like, you know, Gareth Barry and people like that would always accept that Yaya Toure was the man. I feel like certain centre-backs would always accept that Vincent was the man. And I feel that Edin... Everybody knew Aguero was the man. And I feel like Edin wanted to be that man. But the role Edin played in the team coming off the bench so many times in the season when we needed a spark or we needed something and getting them goals, um, he probably did deserve, in my opinion, to play more. But what I found, I found with Edin that when he started the games, I don't think he was as effective as, as, as when he came on late as an impact player. Um, we've seen him now. We've, he's gone to Italy. He's had a fantastic career and, and, and he's played well and scored goals. But with Aguero being there, I just thought he was never going to be number one. But what was your feeling on Edin? I mean, did he have that personality where, you know, sometimes he looked a little bit angry if he was if he was coming on off the bench. He, I think he felt like he wanted to play all the time, which I get. Um, but you can't underestimate, the, the, you know, how important Edin Dzeko was coming on late. He, he did save us a few times. I think Edin, for me, is, is the kind... If you're a manager, I believe you are very frustrating, frustrated with Edin. Why? Because if you look... All around the player and the quality is fast, is powerful, is good on the ball, is good in the air. He can play alone up front. He can keep the ball. He can hold the ball. He can play on his own. He can dribble past player. He can score from outside the box, right foot, left foot. He is the complete player. It's a little bit like Mario, but different kind of, of player. But and so when you look at this, when you look at his game, even now, you always feel that he's playing like I don't know. 85% of his abilities, you know, you, you feel that he's yeah. not pushing himself. Maybe he does, maybe he does, but he's so elegant and he's so effortless that you always feel, you know, that big, that big player, you want him to kind of, you know, run past players, you want him to, yeah. to actually hurt defenders, but he's so elegant and he's so classy when he has the ball. You don't see a big guy like this being so comfortable on the ball. He can turn, he, he's very mobile. And when you look from outside, you feel you have to give me more, you know. And if you don't give me more, I'm not gonna reward you from from for more game time, you know. It's, again, it's it's, it's a, I'm trying to explain how I yeah. see it for the fans, you know. But you always feel that I had that with Dedrick Boyata. You remember Dedrick Boyata? Yeah, Dedrick. Yeah, yeah. You know, in terms of quality, it was really good. But you always feel those kind of player give me more, you know. I want more from you. But maybe that's his maximum, and he's actually unlucky because everybody feels he can give more. And I think with Edin, it was that, you know, that body language, that, that it's not arrogance in a bad way, but that confidence of, mm. I want to be the number one. And all of this makes you feel like, okay, you can be an impact player rather than a starter. And, and to be fair, I think being uh, clever within a group is to understand how the group is functioning. You know, when you have yeah. Sergio Aguero in the end after so many years, he's the best goal scorer of the of, of the club and he's top three in the whole country in terms of goal ratio, you know. So in the end you can't really, you know, can we really have a debate with who should be starting? Maybe not. Can we agree that he should have played maybe a little bit more? Yes, of course, because he's he's up there with the very best. But you know, um you can't really argue on the fact that Sergio was perhaps the player that the team needed. And uh, and when Carlos came back later on, the two of them just, you know, it was a match. So uh, I don't think you can, I don't think you can argue that Yaya was the, 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 the diamond of the midfield. You can't yeah. argue that Sergio was the player. You can't argue mm -hmm. that Vinny, even if he was often injured, when he was playing, we were more solid. You know, you can't argue all of this. So you can't argue that Henry was the best player for Arsenal and he was going to be the player scoring the 1-0 if Arsenal did to win. And as long as, a, as an individual, individual player, if you understand that, then I think you live better within the group because yeah. we all want to be the best, but obviously not everybody can be the best. So try to judge yourself 
and 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 accept certain situation and i think uh yeah it's harder for some some other but i think if you have a clear idea of who you are where you are going and what you're capable of doing i think you live good just touching on carlos tevez um i was out in munich that night when um I think the press made a big, bigger meal than what 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 it was. He refused to come on. I, I seen him warming up. I knew he was getting beat. He chose to bring on Nigel De Jong first. I think it was. Um, and then I believe Mancini asked him to warm up again. I think he turned around and said, um, "No, I've just warmed up or whatever." But then I think this hits what you said early doors. I think Mancini. Um, with the lack of English going up against Carlos Tevez, who was probably the same character, very volatile and very spiky. I think that that looked like they've just had a blow off. But when Carlos decided to pack up and do one back to Argentina and play golf, what was the feeling amongst the players? Did, did anybody reach out to Carlos and say, come on, let's put it to bed. We need you to win the league. Or did the club tell you like, look, don't keep out of it. We'll deal with it. You just concentrate on football. I mean, how does a situation like that work? Because, if we wouldn't have won the league and either came back and we'd have lost the league, it could have backfired a lot for, for Carlos being what did what he did. Fortunately enough, he came back, he hit the ground running and, and it went OK. But I mean, at the time, are you thinking we've lost one of our key players here over a stupid argument? Or are you just keeping out of it and focusing on what you need to do? <laughs> but that, that's, that's my view on it. But remember, I'm coming from Arsenal where you never had... Any, anything like that, you know. So no. for me, seeing this, I'm like, whoa, that's that's another that's another big issue. What, how how are you gonna deal with this? And and of course, you know, the club told us, guys, you don't have to think about this. We're gonna deal with it. And that's why, of course, the the, the, the performances on the pitch is is important. But what is very impressive with City is, yes, you have money, and yes, you can buy the players. But the the the, the board, they're not thinking for the next transfer window. They're thinking about, you know, four or five transfer window ahead, you know, and that's been yeah. the case since the moment I signed. So the way they run, they run the club is phenomenal. So when they tell you we're going to deal with it, firstly, you don't really have a choice. You know, you don't have a choice because obviously the institution will, will always dictate what, what happened, you know, on, on a daily basis. But then you hear that the player is gone and we can't reach him and he's, he's, he's not normal player is is your player who signed from united the men you know rivals so you think wow what's gonna what's gonna happen but quickly you realize that there's so much quality and there's so much um character without within the team that you're gonna be fine you're losing a player but you are going to be fine and that's the sign of top top clubs when yeah. you can sack a manager and you bring a manager in and the machine is, is still going you take off a player and you have another player coming in, young player, or whatever, and the machine is, is still going. This is a sign of something that is happening, is, is bigger than anyone, you know? And that's how a big club is, is run. Man City, now, Arsenal, Arsenal at the time, uh, United at the time, Madrid, Barcelona. Obviously, you always have periods where, you know, you have a, a, a renewal of, of, of a structure or whatever, and it takes time. But most of the time, when you are in a period where everything is going well, you know, within two years, you can have changes, but the performances are still going to be there. And when you lose Carlos, you realize that there's more time for other players and the team is still performing. So, um, you know, you're in good hands and you know that you can still make the job, you know. So um, for me, at first, it's a little bit of a shock because I never experienced this at Arsenal. But at the same time, I can see that the team is still performing and and no players bigger than the, the the club so yeah that's that's it's bad on the monday and then on the next monday when you play two games and you played well you yeah. you know that you know something is going to be uh, is going to be coming and something is nice we don't have to worry about that later on in that season uh towards the end there was a period there was a game against arsenal at the emirates we got beat um Mikel arteta scored um I think United played after us. I don't know, but I remember being in the pub anyway with the lads and 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 and, and everybody saying, "That's it. It's over. They bottled it. It's finished." Um, listen, I'm the most optimistic and, uh, and the most um, loyal Man City fan you can ever give, and, and and I would never accept defeat until it was mathematically impossible. I wouldn't do it. But during that game, watching that, when you when you come after that game, did did 
did you think in your head? I remember Mancini saying it was over, but I think he was very clever at what he did. I think he was very good at cranking the, taking the pressure off the lads and and, and, and deflecting it. But was there an honest reflection in that in the training or around the team that you'd maybe let it slip and and, and you'd maybe United was never were not going to drop any points after that? Well, you know, first of all, after the game, Mancini came and he told us guys. I'm going to go out and tell everybody that he's done. I'm going to go and say it myself. But it's not done and we are going to, to do it. So, you know, when I was telling you about um, his character and, and, and his way of, of managing, you know, all the conflicts that we had, you know, with Carlos, with Mario, with uh, the incident that happened during the, 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 the winter break when uh, Yaya went to the, to the um, Af African Cup, you know, all those stories that you hear. I think, and I'm pretty sure it was a way for him how to get the best out of all the players, you know. So he will create a certain um, situation mm -hmm. either to deflect from the pressure at that time. We're not going to win it, but he told us we are going to do it. But I'm going to tell everybody that he's done. When he told us that, you know, we were not a good team without Yaya, he was just like, you know, he had the knife and he was like just you know, pinching you to kind of make you react. Um, and I think that was his way to get the better, best out of the player. So obviously, you know, he, he create moment where, you know, you feel that's very heavy. You know, it's, it's hard to, to go through a season with that. But when you look back, that was clever, you know. And, and at yeah. that game, yeah, of course, you lose at Emirates and, you know, the distance and the gap with, with United is, 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 is opening up. So, of course, at that time, you think... You know that's going to be a difficult one because United, you know, when they when they start and they keep going and they keep going, you think there's no way we're going to catch. But we're still playing good, you know, and we still yeah. believe that you know we had something. That's why I'm saying before, you know, in I'm 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 in the transition to become a manager. So obviously I'm here and I'm interested in 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 how to manage. But <clears throat> the one thing that you want to you, you want to be part of is is you want to be part of a structure that is working a certain way. So. You're working toward that objective. And if you are doing well, then you keep on doing what you do. So you're just getting better. And if by any means you're starting to struggle, you still keep going because you know that's the way forward. That's the only way you know. So it's difficult today, but tomorrow will be better. And that's the thing. You know, with City, there's no plan B. We go this way, we work that way. And we're going to make it. And, and you can, as a player and as a group, you can actually feel comfortable because you know you're working well. So in football, the only certainty that we know is that you cannot guarantee results. You know, you can have an amazing game and you lose 1-0. But it means that it doesn't mean you play bad. It just means that you're working well. And then as yeah. long as you keep on working well, you will have results. You know, tomorrow or the month later or the year later, the danger is just to throw everything in the bin and start over again. And you felt comfortable at that time that we were doing well. Something happened that the gap opened up. But if we've done well in the first part, we've done really well, we can bring this back. With the player and with the way we work, we will bring this back. And that's what happened. So I think that's, that's a very good example of how you want your team, your club to work. And then you will get there eventually. The United dropped a couple of points, um, had a couple of rocky results, and then we had a Manchester derby at home uh, under the lights, building it up, very, very important. I think a lot of City fans thought if we win this derby, we can get this over the line. I always remember Vincent Company in the tunnel. I remember the camera going on him. He was literally looking straight down the tunnel. He wasn't looking at United players, wasn't congratulating our players, getting them G'd up. He was literally focused like a man possessed. Just tell me about Vincent Company as a man. I, I I speak to Vincent's wife a lot. I have spoke to Vincent a couple of times, and and the guy is he's our captain. He's he's a leader. He's a legend and such a great humble guy. But how important is a player like Vincent Company as a captain? When a when things are going wrong, do you look for him for inspiration? And b that night, I just thought that Vincent Company was was. 10 feet taller than anyone on the pitch. I, I, I believe that he was wanting to drag Manchester City over the line himself. I mean, what's your experiences with Vincent? You played with him for so many, many years at the back. And, you know, I remember him talking about um, 
if there was something wrong in the defence, he, he, he used to set up little classes or little, he'd have a word with the defence and talk about where they went wrong or what happened in games. I mean, did that happen? Because he said Mancini was cool with that. I don't think Pep would let that happen now, but I think Vincent just wanted to make sure the defence was playing the best as it, as it could. Vincent, like I said before, if you look, he was often injured. Not often, like every 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 other yeah. week, but he was injured quite quite a lot. And during this time, there's not much you can bring to a team, you know, when you're injured. But he was always that presence, you know, that guy who was working. So I cannot play, but I can, I can work my body. I can be present. I can be around. I can be vocal, you know. And this is something that you you will have people who will pretend to be like that, you know? Yeah. But you read through those people, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. someone who's telling, come on guys, but you know, it's not you, man, you know? So the effect and the impact that you have within the team is, is not the same. And and on a long run, actually, you, you just, you know, the team is going to put you on the side because, you know, you are, you, you've not fake, but it's not real. With Vinny, it's pure leadership, pure leadership. And he's the kind of guy that, he was telling you, when I'm injured, there's nothing I can do for the team. But still, I managed to be around because I want to, to bring something to the team. And, and, yeah. and actually, he could be out for three weeks. And then he comes back on his, on his, on his return and he will perform. Some player will take time. We need time to, 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 to get the rhythm back, you know. So it, it yeah. will take them maybe 10 days to, to be fit again and to be, you know, ready to play. Vinny, because he was always team-oriented. It's like, you know, we talk a lot now with young players about visualization, you know, so even if you're injured, you can still progress. So you watch your game, you see yourself in a situation, you know, now it's, it's becoming bigger in football. I think Vinny was like that already. So probably during the four or five weeks when he's out, first of all, he was working on his body, but I'm pretty sure he was home looking at tactics, how to improve yeah. himself, look how, how the defense could improve. And then, like you said, he will come and give you some, some input on what he thinks you can do. And all of these together make him ready on a Saturday when he has to perform, you know, after five-week injury. So Vinny is, um, when you talk about captaincy, for me, if you tell me, tell me your best captain, I have two names, Viera and, and, and company. And this is a big, big, big thing to be compared to, to, to Patrick Viera. So there's yeah. no word to describe Vinny, you know. He scored in that goal. He scored that amazing goal against Chelsea. You take Zeko out, you will still have someone to perform for him. Yeah. You take Kun out, even if the team drops in performance, you will have someone to perform for him. You take Yaya out, you have someone to perform for him. Not on the long term, but on the two, three, four games. You take Vinny out, you feel it straight away. You know, you yeah. feel the team is not as solid. And for me, that's simple as that. You know, you can talk about this and that, but in, in fairness, you can take any player of that team and the team will be okay on the two, three run games, you know, uh, yeah, uh, period. Vinny, you take him out one game, you feel the team is not as solid. And, um, and for me, that's, that's enough to tell you what he means and what he represents to the club, you know. And, and that's from the moment I arrived. I, I can't really talk from before because I wasn't there. But from the moment I arrived, I remember the first game I played was against uh, United in the Charity Shield. Yeah. where we lost against United and we had like a little situation, him and me, and then I think it's Nani who scored and he came to me straight away after the game and he told me, ah, do you think we should have done something different? And I said, ah, maybe I could have done this. And he told me, yes, I think I could have done that. You know, and this is a big thing because some people will come and tell you, I think, not your mistake, but you know, but he came and we, we, we talk and communication was yeah. a big thing for him. And that's what you want from, from, from any player. You, that's what you want from a leader. And that's what you want as a, as, as a manager. And that's why I'm not surprised he's doing great today. So, yeah, Vinny is, Vinny is Man City.